Shall I first? Commissioner, oh, Commissioner Ernst? Yes. Commissioner Engel? Yes. Commissioner Rollins? Yes. Commissioner Vogelsang? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. <clears throat> okay, changes to the agenda. Commissioner Ernst, we'd like to add one item to the top of the agenda. Mr. Butters is here to do a brief presentation on North Park. It's just a presentation, some back and forth, but we cannot take any action on anything that he presents tonight. Okay, okay, we'll okay with that? On the agenda. Yeah. Okay. So we will add his uh, item as agenda one under regular business. Um, okay, we'll do open to public requests. So anybody with any comments, we'll have five minutes and we'll have three. to, three minutes, sorry. Um, and we'll have to go to the podium, give your name and your address, and then you'll have three minutes right there. Hi, thank you. My name is Irene Parker. My husband is Don Parker. We just moved into 6100 Northwest 2nd Avenue. And uh, we were very active in the uh, Boca Raton Junior League Community Garden. And if there's any way that we can be of assistance with a community garden, I understand there's some uh, objections with the chemicals. My husband has a PhD in biochemistry. And uh, so if anybody has any questions about the chemicals, he can answer them. But we thank you for your efforts and anything we can do to help, we would like to do that. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. Any more comment? Anybody else? Rodrigo? Yeah. Uh, my name is Eric Sauer. I live at 2034 Southwest 8th Ave in Boca. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Boca Raton Little League. Um, we'd like to request some uh, additional resources and facility improvements at uh, our three parks. Um, this is my seventh year with the Boca Little League. Um, I should mention all the Boca Little League members and uh, coaches are all volunteers and city residents. Uh, for as long as I can remember, we've averaged about 540 kids in the fall season and 630 kids into the uh, spring season. Um, we at the Boca Board of Little League put every effort into making sure any child that wants to play baseball can play baseball. Um, again, we play at Boca uh, at Sugar Sand Park, Patch Reef Park, El Rio, and Don Estridge. Um, during the seasons, we have uh, games every night except Friday at Sugar Sand, and then we play all day at Saturday, all day Saturday at Sugar Sand. Um, El Rio and Patch Reef are used two nights a week for games and then two more games on Saturday mornings. Um, we estimate there's about 1,500 people that come through Sugar Sand Park every Saturday for our, our games. Um, I told you all that to put down a basis for what we're going to request, and it's quite a large request, so uh, bear with me. Uh, we'd like to add new batting cages to the Sugar Sand Park. Um, and I've got a, a one page that I can pass out to you guys that covers all these as well. Um, like to refurbish the existing cages at Sugar Sand Park and Patch Reef Park. We'd like to add pitching bullpens at all three parks. Um, improve and open the upstairs area at the Sugar Sand Quad area uh, for use during games and tournaments to allow for a proper place for league and tournament officials to score and officiate. Uh, we'd like to add public Wi-Fi to Sugar Sand to allow for the pending mandate of app-based scorekeeping and live streaming of the baseball games. Uh, we'd like to also add soft toss hitting stations near each of the dugouts at all three parks. Um, we'd like to cover the spectators area with netting at all three parks to prevent errant foul balls from striking fans. Um, we'd like to also repair, replace, or add new scoreboards to all the fields uh, at those parks. Um, and then further, we'd like to develop a maintenance plan with the city and or the uh, Parks and Rec Department to maintain uh, the clay infields uh, such that the infield plays safely, it drains properly, and remains in good condition. Um, specifically with respect to the batting cages, um, th those are kind of our top priority. Uh, when we have four games starting at the same time, each coach gets 15 minutes in the cage to warm up 13 players. Uh, those players range from 6 to 12 years old. And wrangling 13 players in 12 minutes or 15 minutes is, a, is quite a feat. Um, this can cause uh, conflict between our coaches, get in, get out type of conflict. It causes conflict with the league because they come to us with these issues. Uh, 
for reference, Delray, um, West Boca, South County Park, Weston, and Coral Springs all have a one-to-one -one ratio of fields to batting cages and to alleviate that stress on the warm-up times and um, getting their teams prepared to play uh, baseball. Um, the pitching bullpens, are, those are simple structures. It's a clay mound. There's a plate either 46 or 50 feet away. Um, two chain link backstops, easy to place. Uh, we have the real estate for it. Um, uh, allowing kids to warm up properly is extremely important. Little League up shoulder and Little League elbow have become commonplace in doctor terms for uh, arm injuries. Um, improving and repairing these facilities uh, in the manner I've mentioned, we'll bring the city of Boca's facilities much more in line with other city and county parks within our area and throughout the state. Uh, Boca has been passed over uh, for being chosen to host larger baseball tournaments because uh, Sugar Sand doesn't have the infrastructure to host them, specifically the upstairs area in the batting, uh, upstairs area in the quad, as well as the batting cages. Um, adding those would be able to showcase our uh, city and bring revenue to local businesses if these weekend long type tournaments are allowed to be held there. Um, again, I prepared the one page list. Uh, overall, I expect improvements and cost additions would cost approximately $504,000. Um, ideally, we'd like to see the batting cages built in Sugar Sand in El Rio and the upgrades to the upstairs uh, at the quad as soon as possible, with the remainder of the projects being completed in succession. Uh, lastly, I'd like to volunteer my time in project management for this, should you guys find uh, time and money to do it. I'll be happy to assist. I uh, appreciate your time. Yield for me to questions. Um, I, does anybody have any questions? Uh, well, um, where did you get the the estimate from? The estimates came from local general contractors. Um, I just learned about this meeting on Saturday, so I'm texting my friends as best I can. Uh, <laughs> they did estimates based on square footage of concrete, knowing what it takes to put up properly equipped structures. Um, so they had some good idea, and both contractors came in around the same price. Okay. Go ahead, CJ. Thank you for coming. Um, where are some parks that are equipped with the equipment that you want so that we could go and look at them and see what uh, is involved? I'm gonna make it real easy. I got a USB drive full of photographs to tell you where they're at. <laughs> but they are specifically Delray uh, has some very nice cages. They have some very nice facilities. Um, Weston has some very nice uh, facilities. Uh, South County Park has some nice facilities. Uh, the problem with our batting cages specifically is in my view they were installed improperly um, so they've gotten some additional wear and tear that normally they shouldn't have which is why i'm requesting the refurbishment of the three sets of cages we have now at the back part of sugar sand the quad at sugar sand and then the ones at patch reef so they've been they've gotten excessive damage because of the miss installation and, and poor support structure that they have do you have a written, um, could you email Brianne with all of your requests and spe you know, the specifics that you are asking for? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I emailed it to Jay, Ms. Miller. I, I did that this afternoon. You may not have seen it yet, but I have it over to her already this morning. We did not receive it yet, but Good. we'd love to see it. Okay. Thank um, you. Do you guys want this one? I have hard copies of the one page. Uh, Bob, yeah. go ahead. Just one, one comment. Uh, you mentioned the Hillsborough El Rio. What, yes, sir. What, what do you have over there? One or two fields? Or? We have one field at El Rio North. Specifically, that field is used for our 12U program. It's a 50-70 field. Um, and that's currently where our, our top talent is. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, you know, uh, that's outside the scope of our jurisdiction is Hillsborough El Rio. So uh, I think there's somebody from the city council sitting in this meeting that might uh, be taking mm -hmm. note of that. Yes, sir. Uh, I understand. I, I think if we can get these all coordinated to go in around the same time, we could probably save some money. Well, we'll certainly take it under advisement. I, I certainly support uh, your recommendations, and it's just a matter of uh, uh, time and talent and of course. Uh, funding. So, uh, I'm, I, Listen, I'm a licensed professional engineer. I'm happy to volunteer my talent at any time. Very good. Well, you, you may be called on, I suspect, in the process. You'll have my contact. <laughs> Thank you for coming and bringing it Thank to our guys. attention. We had no idea this is... Uh, this is the reason why we have an open forum for uh, people to come bring their ideas to us and appreciate your coming forward today. Sure. Anything thank else? Craig, yes, sir. go ahead. Eric, uh, thank you for, for coming. I 
I fully support it. And just before this meeting, I went out there to look at the batting cages. Yeah. And I have not been out there at the batting cages since they were first installed. Yeah. And, you know, they're wearing, you know, so having more of them is consistent with everything you want. And the, the hidden thing in what you're saying here is if we invest these these dollars into the fields, into the players, yeah. um, you will be able to have um, more access to tournaments which ultimately brings dollars into Boca for hotels and for other things. Hotels, so, business, restaurants. So yes, sir. To me, it's a, it'll pay off on its own in the community. So it's a good thing. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm just curious uh, uh, if we. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for being here. Uh, I'm a former little league coach, though I won't tell you how long <laughs> ago it was. That's all right. But I used to call. There was this guy Double Day. He and I were friends. Um, we, the, the name rings a bell, yes. Yeah. Um, but uh, assuming we we can get this stuff done, as, uh, specifically the batting cages, yep. what are we looking like looking at in terms of expected lifespan? Um, so the cages that we have now were put in four or five years ago. Right. They were put in poorly and have been exposed to excessive stresses and strains and and bat. I would estimate you could get eight to 10 out of a decent batting cage if it's put in properly with quality um, netting. I estimate, I'm not a batting cage expert yet, but I can be. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Eric, for coming. Um, so I think the next steps would be for um, us um, to go to the city to kind of coordinate and then look at these projects and see which ones that are, are doable. Um, and then, you know, because they're, they're responsible for all Rio, sure. we have Patrice from Sugar Sand, so we'll have to evaluate and see what is a necessity and what we can accommodate for you guys. And, um, we'll go from there. So you. thank you for coming and just keep in mind, just, <laughs> um, <laughs> make sure that you just keep an eye on our meeting so that you know when, and I'll try to let you know okay. when, if, if, and when it's on the next um, meeting. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Back. Back. All right. Any other public requests? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we we add, we added him. We added him as an agenda item. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm A.D. Thompson, reside at 2411 Northwest 32nd Street, Boca Raton. I have with me my third oldest daughter, Charlie, although we call her Cookie, Bye, Cookie. I'm here. Uh, it's been a few years since I was last at one of these meetings, and I'm happy to be back. I am here in part because I've been meeting with some of you. I've met with some of you already. I hope to set up one-on-one -on -one meetings with all of you so that we can discuss the many exciting opportunities we have in the city when it comes to recreational needs. We have a lot of exciting opportunities, I think it's safe to say, with the land you all have at North Park. And it's my hope that we work on them together. And historically, I think it's safe to say that I was maybe one of the folks who was responsible for the relationship not being as collaborative as it could have been. I wanna change that. Shame on me for allowing it to get that way in the first place, but I'm not gonna let that keep happening or let it happen again, I should say. So I really do look forward to what we can do together as partners in this city. And that's just on the new recreational amenities that we might be able to offer. But we can never, I suppose, turn our backs on the existing facilities that we have and the needs that we have. And let me allow, allow me to use this as an opportunity to say, I talked to Eric about this a little while ago, and he's exactly right. I am a current Little League coach, and he's not wrong, Eric isn't, when it comes to getting so my coach my kids are are coach pitch kids meaning they're six seven and eight and so they need all the practice they can get and it's tough to do that on the existing facilities we have when it comes to batting cages so I wholeheartedly agree that the facilities that he identified are in need of upgrade. And the city, I'll see what I can do within my power. I'll do everything within my power to make sure the city makes that a priority that we get those things fixed. It is an important thing. How many, I mean, he may have said this already, but you know, how many youngsters or families in our city are involved in baseball? It's a lot. 
it's something that brings communities together. And we should facilitate that as best we can. And I hate to think that we're losing ground when it comes to other neighboring communities, West Boca, Delray, Weston, those are fine cities, right, in their own right, but they're not Boca. So let's together collaboratively make sure that we have the facilities that keep us first in class, like we almost always have been. So that's my hope is that we can continue to do that. So um, there's a few of you that I haven't spoken with individually yet. I hope to do that soon. I hope to do it very soon because I know that we have a joint meeting on the horizon. I don't know if it's been scheduled yet, but we will sometime soon, hopefully, right, Brian? And um, we're gonna be working together with you all very well. It's my hope, you have my word. So if you have any questions for me, I'm here. I don't expect that you do, and I hate to take up as much time as I did, but it's great to see you guys again, and I'm looking forward to working with you once again. Thanks, Andy. Thanks for coming. I did see your most recent run by Boca Tica mm -hmm. posted on, I think it was LinkedIn. Or yeah, something. Yeah. yeah. So thanks. And you did give a shout out to North Park. So thank you. <laughs> yep. There's a, a lot, a lot of good things that are on the horizon there. And we want to be working with you on that as best well, we can. Just getting the name North Park, because you mentioned North Park and then I Am I thereby committing about? myself to that name? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I have. We already committed. That's the name. There you go. There you go. There you so, go. but nobody knows it yet. So, we're trying to get it out there. Go ahead. Thank you for coming. This is uh, really exciting, and I I agree with you that I think we're going forward. We have a very great opportunity to work together. Just a quick question: Are there any young ladies in um, Little League? There are. It, it not. Not a ton. It's probably between 10 and 20 total. It's low. Boca also has a softball team for specifically for Little League. Yeah, which, which is played on Memorial Park next to City Hall. So there's a dedicated softball league, which my daughters have all played. Not Cookie yet. She's not old mm -hmm. enough. But when the time comes, I'm sure she will. But there are a handful of young ladies in Boca Little League. Thank you. Anybody else? Nope. Thanks for coming. OK, anybody else? Am I on? Yeah. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, uh, Councilman uh, uh, Thompson gave me an opportunity to write down some notes because I wasn't really going to say anything tonight. Um, however, I think it's important to talk about the undeniable growth, and I keep saying this, and you're all aware of it, uh, of, of pickleball. I mean, every time you see a commercial or a um, Info, informa information, uh, it's all about pickleball. The community has pickleball. And so it's it's an amenity, it's a amenity that we need to uh, hold on to and I think um, promote in the city of Boca Raton and certainly in the uh, Beach and Parks District. Um, I've always been able to rely on the support of this commission uh, and all of you commissioners, um, you know, I kind of don't want to say it, but I kind of came over here for support where I had not a lot of support in other areas in the city. But you guys did a wonderful job. You, you know, we built 12 courts out of Patch Reef. Uh, my, um, we changed a couple of uh, tennis courts into pickleball. And, and so it's been a very successful um, venture. And now we have another 18 courts that are gonna be covered and lighted and fanned. And uh, it's just gonna be a wonderful thing. So I just wanna, I'm, I'm always very thankful for, to all of you. Um, as a representative of the Florida Southeast District uh, Pickleball Association, I want to say that you know there's 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 room for all kinds of types of of pickleball. There's private types where where I'm not going to play, but there's all <laughs> semi-private uh, facilities like Patch Reef where I'm certainly always going to play, and then at El Rio where I'll pop in in and out all the time. So pickleball, like tennis, I and I'm going to equate it to tennis, is is um, has the ability to uh, uh, kind of lead people 
into their own little niche. So there are people that want to play at top level and pay for the money, and then there's people that want to play intermediate, and then people that want to play at all, pay at all. But I think it's important that we get all of those factions in because um, I don't want, some people don't want to wait a long time. But I think it's important that we allow a niche for each individual player. Thank you. Thank you, Raul. Anybody else? Oh, okay. We'll go ahead and close public requests and do approval of the minutes of the previous board meeting held on June 17th. Move to approve. Second. Commissioner Ernst? Yes. Commissioner Engel? We almost did it. Yes. Commissioner Rollins? Yes. Commissioner Vogelsang? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, moving on to regular business. Um, so we added an agenda item. So Mr. Butters, you are welcome to go to the podium. I think it's fine. Okay. Th no, thank you. And thank you for having me today. And, and it's great seeing Commissioner Thompson here. I did not know we are going to be blessed having Commissioner Thompson because this is almost the perfect segue for me and for the board. Um, and also the kind words from the gentleman here about pickleball, because as you know, we have hopefully shortly the approval for the concession agreement for indoor pickleball coming up soon. And I do want to echo the remarks of that, uh, Eric, is it Eric, Eric, that this city does, I'm a resident here, as you know, uh, has some of the best recre recreational facilities in all the cities in South Florida. We have our own hockey rink with two sheets of ice, which is very unusual. And now we will have hopefully our own, and one of the few only indoor pickleball facilities, will be, which will be one of the largest ones in the United States. So we'll be able to host tournaments and everything. Um, but today I just came and I just did this out of, um, you know, the courtesy of, and, and goodness of our own heart to think, to create some discussion because we've had some other discussions over the different sessions about the old hotel site. And this is at North Park, by the way. And what could we do with the hotel site? And a couple months ago, when I was on the um, city commission agenda for one of our buildings, had nothing to do with. Uh, the indoor pickle facility, two students came from St. Andrews and asked the city commission about more field houses. And I don't remember the students' names, but it's somewhere on record. And I was sitting there, I'm like, you know, that makes sense. I know we have a, a pretty good one at Sugar Sand Park. So I said to myself, well, let me, and I have, you know, obviously we have the, um, the site plan for North Park. And over the years, I know Commissioner Ernst has been very adamant about what could we do on the old hotel site? What options are there? Could it be a hotel? Could there be something else? So I said, well, let's see if what we could actually fit on that three acre site for a field house. So this is very preliminary. And um, this is, of course, the indoor pickleball facility that we have going through planning and zoning and hopefully approved soon. So this, this um, little section here is, Oops. Did I touch it? There's a pointer up there, Mr. Butters, if you want to. Oh, I'm not good at high tech stuff. I mean, this, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is up my speed, by the way. All right, okay. Okay. Um, there you go. Technical. Oh yeah. Okay. So that <laughs> that circle is the uh, the hotel site. So what I did do, and I guess this is available now, it's public record, so you get it from Brianna or whatever. But I just laid out basically um, a forty thousand foot building, and it basically has, I believe, four basketball courts with room for bleachers and a storage area and some restrooms. Not too elaborate, but. It's only three acres and it has some additional parking. And my thought is between the additional parking, the North Park parking that we have on the north and south end, and the pickleball parking, there's probably adequate overflow 
parking between all the different uses, at least for now, that could accommodate it. So that was my initial take on the site plan. And then I said, well, what does this cost? You know, and maybe the city commission has dollars for these things too, besides the beach and park district. Um, so how do I switch the next slide? Arrow? It should be the one right underneath that button. Ah, <laughs> okay. So I did a rough budget. And again, this is just a rough budget based on the indoor pickle facility and the indoor ice rink that we built. So we have a pretty good guess of these things. And you can say I listed everything. I'm not going to go through it one by one. You know, I did put in, and I don't know the relationship between the building department fees and the district, if they charge or don't charge. But if they don't, great. Then you take out that $350,000 of cost, potential cost. And I'm not sure the county, if there's impact fees or not, you could take that out. But whatever. So there's roughly, you know, $13 million is my guess, potentially, to build this thing and to equip it. And I think it's just worth a discussion. And, you know, again, the this is the elevation of the indoor pickle facility. So something, a sister type of facility is kind of what the thought might be for that. Again, this is the, the pickleball, but the basis of the numbers that we came up with was based on, on, on this building. So I just thought it was for, it's worth a discussion. I'm not asking for anything. Um, it's just as a citizen, just like Commissioner Thompson, just like Eric, we're here to bring forth ideas. And you know, it's good people like Eric um, and this young man here, I forgot, Raul, that come forth and generate these great ideas because otherwise, you know, most people don't take the time out of the day. So again, that's it. That's my uh, little two minute pitch. Something to think about what could be done on the hotel site. And I do know that there's a need for a field house because it's been expressed here by members of this community and students, and that's worth a discussion. And I thank you. Ironically, the CIP projects are listed on the agenda tonight, so it might come up. Um, yes, it's definitely um, something to think about. Did anybody have any? Go ahead. I, I almost did it too. Um, uh, first of all, thank you for this. This, you know, this isn't an easy thing to do. It's not just uh, I'll I'll spend 15 minutes with a piece uh, with a pencil and a piece of paper. So thank you for uh, going th going through this. Uh, it a field house is definitely needed. There's no two ways about it. Councilman uh, Thompson and I have already had discussions about it, and we both agree that this is something uh, that we need to do, and that North Park might be the appropriate place to put it. Um, I I think though, and if I'm not mistaken, we would have to go through a whole separate uh, process. Yeah, Commissioner, the answer that's correct. So there, there are a number of considerations we need to look at with regards to that location, and the current discussions with Mr. Butters and his team are, are limited to the concession agreement and to that particular uh, racket facility that we're currently right. discussing. Right. right. So, um, and I'm not asking for Steve. I just did that because you know the juices were flowing. Right. And I'm sitting in it. You know, I, I'm like, okay, what else can we do as we get closer to hopefully approving the pickleball and. I'm like, well, uh, we have this hotel site that you know had a lot of traffic on it before, had a hotel, the water, the sewers there. The, you know, I'm saying what's not? It's an enclosed facility, so it wouldn't be, I think, too offensive to the Boca Tica residents because it's fully enclosed. And I just throw it out there. So again, I'm not asking for. I'm not really looking to volunteer to build this thing, <laughs> but um, and I that think was going to be the to next thing I asked you. But yes, uh, I'd be happy to be engaged in the process and you know obviously but i know it there's a public forum for all that yeah but i i do thank you for doing this uh it helps us out you know it gives us a couple of ideas and you know now we're not going in it into it totally blind uh and this is one of the things that i'd like to get uh uh the cooperation collaboration of the city as well and maybe even make it a P3 project. Um, but I think you did a phenomenal job. If you did it like just like that, uh, over a matter of day, a, a day or two? Well, we have, you know, we have architects and we have access to the master plan. So it was easy to draw inside the box. It wasn't tremendous amount. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, like a lot of politicians and tell you how much work. But it, yeah, it's we, you know, it's a thought process, and I do think it's worth a discussion because it it seems to be reappearing. I know we have a lot of great baseball fields and and football fields, and but for some reason this field house seems to be important, and I think we have obviously, you know, a lot of acreage. But the low lying fruit, I think, inside North Park could be that house health site because it, Definitely. it's clear, there's no trees, there was a building there before, there's utilities, there's road access, it fits easily into the phase, our initial phase. So I just throw it out. Again, I'm not asking for anything, I just want to get the, the thought process going. That's all. Well, much appreciated. Thank you. Um, Malcolm, this, yes, sir. thank you. I think it's great. Thank okay. you. I'm all in on that. That makes a lot of sense. Um, my question to you, though, just out of curiosity, what is the square footage of the pickleball center versus, you said 40,000 for the basketball? Yeah, the pickleball center with the mezzanines, I believe is like 72,000 square okay. feet with the second floor. Okay. I think the footprint is somewhere like 62, 63,000 feet. For the... Pickleball center. For the pickleball just center, the, yeah. Okay. And then yeah. this one is about 40,000? Is, I think, I'd have to look that up. I think, I think that's I think it's like 41 or 42,000, Okay. Yeah. Just that's strong. Again, we think it meets all the setbacks and all the little things. It could be tweaked, but I think yeah. it's around 40,000-ish feet. You could reasonably accommodate a building. You could do but you, the building with um, four basketball courts, full size basketball. Yeah. yeah, the architect drew those in. So I think okay. those are roughly... 90 uh, feet by 50 or something like that. I mm -hmm. think you got to check it, but we could verify with him. No, that's okay. That's, yeah, it, it, easily, it, I think easily three, I think four with some stands. You know, we, we I had him draw stands in there because people are going to watch kids play. It's not, I don't think it's meant for tournaments really. I think it's more for like intramural and high five basketball and, you know, um, poker hoops, poker hoops, <laughs> poker hoops right? Yep. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Bob, Susan? I do. Go ahead. Thank you for coming, Malcolm. It's nice Thank to see you. you. Um, is there a chance for the footprint to be larger to accommodate more uh, sports and more activities, sort of like the Sugar Sand Field House that has a myriad of activities over there? On that site? Mm -hmm. Well, you have three acres. So the question is, how much more parking do you want? Right. You know, so three acres is roughly 120,000 square feet. So the question is, you know, how do you balance parking in a footprint of a building and then setbacks and green areas? Can it so go I'm up? not, oh, you mean go up? Well, <laughs> that might cost more money, but I think, you know, we got, I mean, we, the district, right, has a lot of land available in North Park in various phases. So I'm going to leave that to you. Um, I just, I was taking baby steps, and like I said, the low-lying fruit commissioner is that hotel site because it has a lot there. But, yeah, if you want to think big, I think, you know, I will leave it to you. You get a lot of land in, the, in to think big. But this is, again, it's, you, you, there's a rough budget in there, too. So if you use per square foot, you know, $300 plus a square foot or so, you know, you could get multiply it 100,000 feet. You could come up, you know, is it $30 million? Could be. Brianne. Was, she stepped out. Oh, um, I'll ask Brianne what the, we had desi had a design for a field house at Sugar Sand a number of years ago. So it it accomplished a lot of, of different uh, boxes. So yeah. I, yeah, I'm not an expert on field house. I'm, I could draw a box and throw some things in there. I wanted to get you guys thinking about it. We appreciate it. I think it's it. important. And then, you know, you have a great board, and I'm always happy to help as a citizen and help with pricing and whatever input you need. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Malcolm. Um, makes sense. Low lying fruit, utilities already there. Makes sense. Um, it gives us something to talk about and maybe something to talk about with the city. Maybe they'll give us some money. If you want to commit <laughs> maybe $13 million? I don't know. Um, <laughs> just kidding, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, thank you. It's appreciated. Thank you. Um, okay, so we're all good on that? Okay. So we'll move on to um, the District CIP 2025 discussion. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Commissioners, on page five of your agenda packets, we started the conversation about our CIP. Um, putting forth a list of projects that are going to be having some carry forward. Right. And some new projects on the budget as well. Um, some of those projects that we have heard about tonight, uh, field house design, um, covering the roller hockey rink, which is another project that's, um, we don't have anybody here tonight, but I know we've heard in the past that that's essential to do. So a list of projects, we wanted to get some input from the board tonight, because we're going to use these numbers to uh, put together some proposed millage rates at our next meeting. Also in your uh, folders, there's a request from FAU um, for some regrading of their fields. And I can let Mr. Uh, Commissioner Rollins talk a little bit about this. We do have two agreements with FAU. One of those agreements obligates us to fund half of this um, and that is for the FAU soccer game field. We're obligated to fund half of that. They have asked for half of the other one as well. And I'll let Commissioner Rollins weigh in on that. Uh, thanks, Brianne. Uh, over the past uh, several years, uh, we've had a, a number of different uh, complaints from the uh, folks that are using the Glades field as far as the maintenance of those facilities. Uh, uh, and uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, and uh, Melissa Dawson may know, but I don't know that there's been any um, laser grading or um, any aeration of those fields over there, which means the area is compacted, which uh, uh, makes uh, the uh, growth of grass a lot more difficult. Um, and so I, I've um, um, been listening to this and I, I Eventually, I uh, just uh, asked FAU if they would put together some kind of an estimate for what it would cost to, to do that project. And um, I have spoken uh, with uh, Ryan White uh, about the possibility of uh, sharing in that expense since we're not the only ones that use that facility. Um, and um, I, I, I don't have, um, I did not, uh, try to pin him down or get an agreement since uh, that's beyond the scope of my authority. But I, I, I did uh, want uh, to get this in front of us as we're talking about the budget because uh, it's uh, been um, it's, it's been an issue that uh, I've been hearing about for a couple of years. And, and, and with the amount of usage that you put on there as well as other uh, Henderson schools been using it. Uh, so it's not our sole project to to do, but the uh, interloper agreement that, uh, you know, you'd mentioned, it just says that uh, the parties agree that any maintenance costs associated with resurfacing, uh, which shall occur, it's that every five years shall be shared evenly between FAU and the user. Um, I, I don't have a commitment from FAU, uh, but like this contract says, you know, uh, if, uh, if there's a a maintenance uh, plan that's uh, put forth by the university, uh, you'd be obligated to share in, in the cost. And so there's the cost figure in front of you. And what I wanted to do today was to get that in front of you uh, and see if we could put that in the in the budget uh, so that uh, at the conclusion of next year, can't do anything with it this year uh, because uh, um, the, it's a little bit too late to start that process if we were going to be able to use that facility in the fall for our uh, our uh, soccer fields. So it'd be something that would be uh, designed for the 2025, um, uh, May, of, May of 2025 when uh, the facilities are taken over. Uh, we turn those back over to FAU after the soccer program is finished with the, uh, the fields. So. I, I, I merely present this to you as a as a uh, suggestion. Uh, I, I would like to say it's a re request uh, from uh, FAU, from the soccer players, and from me who have been uh, hearing about this for the last couple of years. So uh, I'd be happy to try to answer any questions, but uh, the uh, suggestion today is that uh, we um, see if, if we can uh, get this agreement between us and FAU to get this project done. Keith? Yeah, uh, are we obligated contractually for both fields or just one? Um, that I can't answer the question. Uh, yeah. Is that right? 
Yeah, so as, as Brian indicated, we have two agreements with FAU under the 2016 agreement for the varsity fields, the maintenance and upgrade costs are split. Mm -hmm. Under the 2020 agreement, the burden is on FAU. Okay, so we're talking about um, the varsity field being the FAU soccer game field? Yes. Okay, and the other one, uh, we, we don't have any obligation, but we use it, right? Am I correct? That's um, probably the heaviest used uh, field that we have over there, Steve. Glades. Okay. The Glades fields, that's right. Yeah. Um, so here's a thought, and take it for what it's worth, that we pick up the cost in its entirety for the one field that we don't have to uh, deal with. Um, in other words, take this as a package and go back to FAU and say, all right, we'll pick up the 137 and change, and uh, you're on your own to the other. And I think the math works out so that we're living up to our end of the agreement under the 2016 uh, agreement, um, and maybe a little bit more. But I'm just doing that off the top of my head. Yeah, I think it's a little bit more, but... It's still more than. Yeah, it, it would come out to about. It would come out to about thirty percent total of the whole package. Go ahead. Yeah, what I would suggest uh, is that uh, we uh, authorize uh, Brienne to have that discussion, and I certainly could. Uh, uh, facilitate that meeting, but uh, since I really don't have the authority, and, but I would like for somebody at the district to be able to weigh in on this after uh, uh, I, I'm not the one to be negotiating this agreement, <laughs> but uh, I would uh, like to suggest that we uh, have Brianne uh, have this conversation with uh, with FAU and see if we can come to terms to, to take care of what you suggested, Steve. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a good idea. Is that yep. Look, okay. I'm supportive of Brianne working with them to cover both their important fields to the community, and if I think we can contribute to them. My question would be: Is when does the agreement expire? Do we have? Are we putting money in it for a long time? Long. Like 136. Okay, so we got lots of time, so we ought to be contributing to it. The only other ask would be. FAU needs to take care of the restrooms. I don't know where they're at today, but to me, that's a basic. They got the staff, they got the resources, remodel them, do whatever they have to do, but have them working. That's all. Yeah, well, I, th yeah. I think we tr tried to address that last year by yeah. maintaining them. It, it's just the problem uh, that I, I see is that uh, they don't like those facilities at night, and I think there's probably uh, – uh, or even during the day, there's folks that uh, take, take advantage of that facility that, even, that don't even work there or live there or play there. So it, it's just heavy volume. It that, is. That's all of it. It's just got to be somehow there's got to be a plan to not shut it down. It's great. If they're using them at midnight, great. But it's, I, I think that's just an, some cleaning. That's, that's an opportunity yeah. for uh, yeah. Brian to have that, that, that discussion. Uh, and uh, Brian, I'll. Uh, uh, get in touch with uh, Brian, and then we'll work out a, a time uh, that's mutually convenient for the two of you. By the way, it might be fine now. I don't even know. I just well, <laughs> so during soccer fall yeah, during season the and spring season, it's pretty bad. heavily yeah. used and very yeah. not We'll take it all up. Clean. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, it did get a little better, but, I mean, they can only do as much as they can do. They can't be in there every 20 minutes cleaning, right? So... And there's cleats in and out, and there's a lot of reasons that we'll never wet clean. grass and kids, and <laughs> so yeah. Well, Go ahead. I, I, okay, um, I'm totally in support of of whatever we have to do, especially with our ILA. But I do have a, a technical question for council if we go in and we say, okay, we're going to take care of 100 percent of the FAU game field. Does that uh, modify our or uh, nullify our agreement in any way, or is it 
if we just come to, to terms with them, it's okay. Yeah, that's a good question, Commissioner. And what we would ultimately do is probably reduce whatever we would agree to down to writing. So it would be a presumably a one-time commitment to maintain the fields this mm -hmm. time, and then five years from now or some point in the future, we needed to revisit that. We wouldn't be obligated again. Uh, but because of the way the agreement is currently worded and the burden is on them for the glades field, we would want at least an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, or some limited amendments to the agreement just to confirm what our obligation is. Thank you. Um, Thank you. On the, on the rest of the budget, the remaining parts of the budget, we have allocations set aside uh, for beach renourishment, which is we do that every year. We have the North Park project. We're setting aside additional money there. Uh, the Tennis Pickleball Center will be under construction, um, continuing with the next fiscal year, so we're going to carry money there. The Patry Playground, those bids are due later this uh, this month, so we'll have a better idea uh, prior to adopting a budget what that number is going to be. Um, we had set aside uh, 2.5 in 2024. We're going to carry about 2 million forward. We're guessing that we're going to need to set aside at least another 1.5, but again, in a couple weeks, we'll have a better idea of what that project will cost. Um, and then the sugar sand park columns, um, we did get the bids back. Those are being evaluated. So we're going to um, have that at a future meeting, but we're going to probably end up carrying some of that money forward into the next fiscal year. So then on proposed projects, these are projects that came up throughout the year um, that we've added to our CIP list. Ocean Strand, we want to add, um, right now we would just add what kind of like what they did at Gumbo Limbo when it was under construction was that trailer, and it was an ADA accessible trailer restrooms on site because um, we're still waiting for that lift station situation. So we would look at adding that. Um, there's been some input from the public. It gets a lot of use, especially in the mornings and evenings from the local residents. They like to use that trail, but maybe think about adding some fitness equipment or even a natural playground for the kids that go down there. Um, putting aside money to design a second uh, field house um, probably needs to be more money set aside for that, looking at the house estimate we saw tonight. Um, Sugar Sand Park multi-sport rink cover, we set aside 1.5. We had uh, 1.2 set aside originally, so we just increased that. We can certainly um, evaluate that further to see if we need to add more to that. We wanted to start the fire prevention program. This came up during uh, discussions this year from Commissioner Ernst and just making sure that we're staying on top of some of the invasives in our park. So um, Melissa has started that conversation with the uh, city staff and we're looking at doing it in phases at Sugar Sand Park and then through all of our parks. So we would look at spending about $500,000 the first year. Uh, park security is ongoing, setting aside another 200000 for that. We want to make sure we have the uh, plate readers coming and going at all of our parks. Roofing projects are ongoing again. We want to finish out so all the roofs at Sugar Sand will match. Um, the community center, we're just waiting on some punch list items that they still have to do some repairs to some pa pavers, but that's almost done. We're just... Um, having a little trouble getting that work done. Um, swim center pool resurfacing, that's the design that was just recently approved, so we set aside 425 for that. Um, so now we're just looking for any additional input, anything anybody wants to take off, put off, or add to our CIP list so we can put together a solid budget. I have a question. For the multi-rink, uh, the multi-sport rink cover, is that 1.5 that was allocated, is that the money that was set aside for the shade yes that's that yes okay so the once we use that we won't have any other allocation for any other shade next year okay so after going out to um sugar sand uh it, it is an observation that the um road striping and the parking is kind of gone <laughs> there is yeah. none so it'd be good to add it to the budget to reassess all our parks if they need road striping and, and signage and even coming in here just some touch-ups of the front signs to would be nice painting there is some on that there is some of that starting next year through the city's um, okay. maintenance um, but we do have a drainage issue at the parking lot too at sugar sands so we can look to add that and get it all done and, i mean it, going in it looks pretty good the backfield on the i guess the south the north side of the quad fields could be resurfaced. The rest of it looks pretty good, okay. um, but it really just needed striping and markers. You know, where delineating the, you know, the, the middle of the road is important. I still call into question why there's not a three-way stop at the exit. Um, no matter what Kimmy or anyone says, it looks like high traffic and there's no stop signs. We can ask the city's traffic engineer to look at it again. Yeah, well, I think it, it should be a new one now. So yeah, that'd be a good idea. Okay. 
it, it seems like it, if there's that much volume out there with the kids, is what's wrong with um, stopping traffic? So it kind of slows it down a little bit. But overall, I, I, I think these are ambitious and, and the, um, the work they've done on the front of Sugar Sand is really very good. I see them doing it in phases with a whole bunch of people and they kind of go through it. It's, um, that's part of the beauty of the back of Sugar Sand. So I'm always kind of hesitant of what they're doing on all the things, but it does need to be done. Otherwise it becomes just overgrown. So thank you, it looks real good. Sorry, I looked at you and I said, see if I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think this uh, at first blush looks pretty good. Uh, the only comment I have is on Ocean Strand. Uh, I've been getting a lot of requests uh, from people. You know, it's a beautiful park, but there's no parking and I don't want to walk all the way from, uh, from, from the beach parking or from uh, the other side of Gumbo Limbo. So I, I recognize that we wanted to put in meters and for that we need that lift station situation resolved. But is there any way we could open up a part of that to some kind of limited parking? I think it'd be very hard to control without some mechanism um, to do that because parking is so, I mean, on the weekends, parking is really hard to come by on the, at the beaches. So we, we will look at it and we'll talk to city staff um, and certainly see what the options are. Okay, thanks. You know, just, I'm sorry, Bob, mm -hmm. but one observation on that is it is hard to control, but maybe we, they should really make an effort to do it because if, if parking is that desperate on the beachfront, um, it's kind of already there. <laughs> so an effort should be put forth. If that's where people want to go, we'd have to kind of facilitate that. And that means- Well, I think yeah. there's plenty of parking. It just costs people money who aren't residents. Like if you have, you know, the Spanish River has tons of parking and so does Red Reef. I don't think it's like overflowing or anything. Not, like not for, the, for the daytime passes, but the other issue we have at Ocean Strand is that there is nobody, nobody's lifeguarding the beach across yeah. the way. So that's a safety that's concern. Good. You don't want people crossing over and then going on that beach and God forbid something happens. So it's all stuff that um, we'd have to look at. I, we're not ready to open up that beachfront side yet because um, mm -hmm. I know that environmental work is going to be pretty intense on that side, but that's something we could look at for a future year. I, I agree with you. I mean, if you open it up, they're going to cross the road and there's going to be a hazard. Um, but I, I would say kind of put it on the long range project list with the city to say where is it, because South Park fills up with parking completely. They close a lot full by you know, 1130. Right. So I, I think there is still a need for just parking and then it it's complicated, but we can't ignore it. So at some point, it's got to be on someone's project list, and really it needs to rest with the city because it's um, they have the safety factor of crossing over the road and all the other factors with it. So working with them is important. I, I and I, I think it's a good uh, a project list, uh, Brianne. The, the, the question uh, that um, comes to mind is how does this uh, fit in with uh, our uh, the, the city's budget and our millage uh, rate that we need to propose? Are, are all of these projects something that you want to put in this year's uh, budget or is this a wish list for uh, some future items or um, that, I, it's a pretty aggressive list of you're trying to undertake this uh, for the, this next, next fiscal year. Yes, um, a big chunk of it is North Park, and I think that we're hopefully going to start the actual development of that next fiscal year. Um, so we probably won't spend it all in one over the course of the first year because, you know, construction takes a while, as we've learned. But uh, this is all something that we can budget for um, next fiscal year. We are looking at millage rates, at the rollback rate, the current rate, um, rates in between that. and. And I just wanted to see tonight if there were other projects like, do we want to add money to look at the um, baseball accommodations at our fields? Do we want to put money aside for that? Do we want to put money aside for the FAU? Those are all things that we'll add to it and then see where we are with our millage rate and come back at next meeting to just show those differences. Yeah, well, I, I do do think that, you know, the Eric's appearance here was timely uh, and, and informative. Um, and, and, you know, it's something that, you know, we, made those repairs to those uh, batting cages and uh, I've completely forgot about it, you know, since that time. And I'm, I'm not a, uh, I'm, 
I never played uh, baseball for one year, and uh, they stuck me in uh, left field, so I wasn't getting much activity. So I went on to basketball. <laughs> so, but I, I agree that when if um, if our facilities are not up to uh, VOCA standards, if you will, uh, and for the safety and the pleasure of our community, I think that you know we definitely should uh, incorporate uh, uh, an upgrade uh, as presented by Eric, and that, that should definitely be in the uh, the projects. And of course, uh, I, I do um, uh, feel very strongly about it, you know, and, and appreciate the support of, of the commission to talk to FAU about you know redoing uh, the varsity field or in some way accommodating some of the uh, um, the maintenance uh, for the uh, the varsity field and um, in some form or fashion that uh, as uh, Steve described. Okay. Susie? Good job, Rianne. As usual, you, you and your staff uh, are doing a great job. Um, is there wiggle room in the budget for these two projects that we yes. were? Okay, so uh, do we have to compromise anything else? Um, I, I don't know right now, but I think we'll be okay. I think we can make all these things work. Is that um, without raising taxes? Right. That's the goal is to not have to do that. Okay. Um, the, I, like I said, the one the one big thing that we're going to see coming in July is how much the playground's going to cost. So that may shift some things, but there are there's wiggle room like North Park. We're probably not going to spend fourteen million dollars next year. Um, I mean, we've spent some this year, so the carry forward won't be ten million this year. But um, there will be some wiggle room for some of those things. Is when you talk to Eric, if you talk to him again, is there any um, interest? with the Little League in doing some fundraising on their own? I, I can certainly ask that, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think they did help us they, last time. They did. Uh, they did. They contributed they, towards that. He did offer to, prior to his meeting, they offered to contribute towards it in some way or form. But I, I would add on Eric's proposal, he had out there later scheduled safety for the stands and the netting. Yes. And I'd put it all in there. Top priority is safety for you know, balls coming at you from if you're sitting there not watching right. is not a good thing. So I would say absolutely the whole thing. Okay. Um, so the only thing that for me, again, Ocean Strand adding bathrooms and fitness equipment would for me would not be a priority. I would rather keep that a natural ocean side um, park. Um, and so I'm okay with that because there are parks in the city that don't have bathrooms and they're still used because I consider this more of a neighborhood park that's accessible by the people who live there and the people who are biking and walking. So I don't necessarily agree with having um, a restroom facility put on the park. I think it will make it less attractive and I don't think it's necessary. Um, that's my opinion. Um, I think looking at the field house and definitely the design cost for that um, is important because we've heard over and over that we need a field house. Um, and then the rink cover for shade, the prevention, I think all of those are are good. And I think we'll, um, this is a, a good list to have to see where we go. And there's so, always other things that come up during the year. So. Right. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Brianne, I don't know what the scheduling would be on that um, uh, drainage issue we talked about over there on the. We're going to do that at the next meeting. I'll bring that in for okay. the for the roll up meeting. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Yep. I, I'd be okay deferring the um, Ocean Strand bathrooms until they keep sorting out their nook station thing. I mean, to put something in there, and you know, we don't know how that's going to. So it, I just keep deferring it. I still think that. The, the call I got is um, people who walk along there want a rest stop along the way. And that that's the need. For, well, I mean, so, but, but the, the, you know, there is a bathroom. If you go just south of there, there's the golf course bathroom, right? And if you go just north of there, there's all the bathrooms that are located in Spanish River Park. Um, I just don't think if we're keeping that as a natural park, I don't think we have to have a bathroom every 100 feet along A1A. Um Especially if we don't have parking, I just think, you know, it's. Uh, I'll give them your name to call. I mean, Gumbo Limbo is right nearby, and so is Red Reef. It's not that far, so I'm just I'm trying to keep this park 
for me personally, I just want to keep this park as natural as possible. It's on the ocean. And to have people be able to enjoy um, the intracoastal and eventually be able to enjoy the ocean side as well. Um, but, you know, that's my opinion is to keep it as natural I, as possible. I don't think we need to go through it all now, but I'm not. I think you have to have restrooms and shelters. Those are important for any park, just from a safety perspective. But I hear you, and I say it's not a priority. So there are other things that we could move on to. Um, I do think the field house, as proposed today, um, should be further explored with the city, because as Malcolm said, and as um, you know, a number of other guests have said here. The fact that it was a hotel site and all the connection and connectivity is there, um, this is the right time to really um, finish it all out. And I know that the site plan is already <laughs> in the works and stuff like that, but there'd be better time spent on that. And that, that alone is like a five-year deal. So that puts anything off in Ocean Strand for a while anyway. Well, we also have to check um, with council to see if that site needs to be um, rezoned. Yeah. In terms of from what it is now to possibly what it needs to be for a recreation facility, right? So, um, but if we did it, it would be completing that whole side. But to me, then it, it's pretty much done. And then we're, we're gonna, we put all our effort into that. And then we, we know what we're working on all in one area pretty easily. And I think that's a big accomplishment, to be honest with you. That's a multi year effort. And you can kind of finish that part out. Um, you know, we still got the other side. To think about but it's better to just get this done so just a thought did you have your meeting of Greg yet Greg, Greg just got back from vacation today so I didn't push anything with him right away got it um, but I, I've been talking to Tiffany and Greg there's I mean certainly a lot to talk about you know, with all the moving parts of recreation um, but we are going to get on that yes okay any other comments on the CIP project nope okay thank you all that was helpful conversation Okay, moving on to North Park Environmental Work. Commissioners, on page eight of your agenda packets kind of details why this is here and what it's about. You guys are aware that this was a former golf course, and with that comes uh, the burden. Um, once we decided not to build a golf course to get approvals from the FDEP, um, and that meant doing some preliminary soil samples. Obviously, some of those came back slightly contaminated. So this is the additional work that's required to satisfy what they want to see before we can start construction. I know it's a big number. Um, there was a prior um, subcontractor uh, that was doing the work. Their budget was very similar to this budget, in fact, a little bit higher, so this is less than we anticipated. Um, but we were switching because these this uh, ECS group has committed to our timeline and committed to keeping this project on track. Um, and I have Lumi here from the link to answer any questions that you guys may have. but. Um, Unfortunately, this is all required work, so there's not a lot of uh, leeway. leeway on it. It's all going to be required for us to get these permits issued from anybody. They're going to want to see that the FDEP signed off on it. The FDEP wants to see quarterly um, samples and quarterly reports to know that this property is safe to put a park on. Um, so tonight, I know it's a big number, but we are just looking for approval of this additional services agreement as presented. I'm here to take your questions. Yeah. Um, just a quick question. It's uh, a lump sum, $162,000 plus uh, hourly of, an, of another six. Is that correct? Or is the six included? The, the potential of 6,000, yes. Right. So we're looking at a total of 168,000? Yes. Okay, thanks. And this is just for the east side. Just this is just the east side. The west side would have its own set of needs. Although, if the west side has a partial golf course, that's a little bit different because we're not changing. Um, right, that's different. So, anybody else? Oh, how, Craig. How many hours are they going to spend? It's a lump sum, one hundred and sixty-two thousand. How many hours are they going to spend doing this? That well, so that we can do some paperwork here. <laughs> yeah, there's five different tasks. This is Lumi Fuentes representing Miller Lake. There's five different tasks. So the first task is really the cleanup target level consultation, where it's really working with FTEP and setting 
the target of the contamination that's allowed on the site for recreation use. So they'll be working on that. Then there's another um, task for the actual soil management plan preparation, which that one is um, $10,000. And then there's a supplemental soil assessment, and that is the biggest, um, one of the biggest costs on that, because that's further exploration on that. And then the quarterly monitoring um, is another large amount as well, $48,000. Really yeah, I don't I don't think it's just paperwork that they're doing. Yeah. There's actual okay. further investigation. There was a lot of preliminary. Well, the, they're doing soil assessment um, and then monitoring of it as well. So those are all assessments as well, sampling and things like that. So that's actual field work that's being done, correct? Yeah. Correct. Right. And that's all the permitting with FDP that's required in the coordination, right. not only with the with the city, but Palm Beach County as well. Bob, <laughs> go ahead. So I, I, I assume that I, this is not re, uh, including the remediation of any of this, or is it this just the testing that we're, we're talking about and evaluation? It, it's, in, it's including the plan, the soil management plan. Um, the actual construction of the remediation is the cost of, of the construction on site and the moving of the soil is not included. But we don't know if there's going to be remediation required at this point, correct? Correct. We, we're not um, concrete on it and are just, we're being as uh, cost effective as possible. We're going to keep the contamination on site and recap. So we have already um, in-house con consulting on what are the best options where it could be the most sustainable and cost effective on this as well. And so that would be part of the construction documents. It would be part of the whole plan building part. Okay. Um, on task number three, this, with your experience in doing this, is there a seasonal difference with the results? In other words, we're in the, the very rainy season. We just came off of a dry season. Would any of that skew the, the, diff, the uh, results? They do it because um, with the quarterly monitoring as well, they'll, they'll measure it out. Okay. So they, they're able to, to check those those quantities and we do have the preliminary to base it off as well. Okay. So, Thank you. It's pretty down below when they do the assessment as well. well the, the best part is it said ECS is confident this work will be completed quickly and will not impede the timeline of the project. Yeah, yeah. And, and I could, you know, we we changed um, gears because we we know we need it's a big topic and needed to be done quickly. Um, and we wanted to get it going before we even started construction on the site. So they were quick. They already done some work out there. Brand could, could express that. So they're on on target for it. So we feel confident on that. Okay. Any other questions? I think we need a motion. Yeah. motion. Move to approve. Second. Okay. All right. Oh, excuse me, Commissioner, er Commissioner Ernst? Yes. Commissioner Engel? Yes. Commissioner Rollins? Yes. Commissioner Bell will say? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, approving on, uh, moving on to approval of payroll and invoices. Commissioner Ernst? Yep, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion for approval of uh, payroll and invoices in the amount of $62,837.40. Second. Commissioner Ernst? Yes. Commissioner Engel? Yes. Commissioner Rollins? Yes. Commissioner Vogelsang? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Motion passed. Okay. Reports and discussion items. Executive Director Hall. Well, Commissioners, just a few things. North Park is still, um, I'm actually reading the email now. We are still um, planning to be on the agenda for August for the site plan approval. So that's a really good thing. Um, I can tell you, Owen just emailed back that we're still moving forward with that. Um, we will have the Boca Paddle Agreement on our next agenda, July 15th. I wanted to thank uh, city staff Jason and Brian, who's here tonight, for the work setting up our new microphones and sound system. We had no feedback tonight with everybody talking and the microphones on the whole time. It was great. And they did a great job. Um, and Melissa, too, did some great Well done. Um, July 4th events are happening this week in the city. We put parking passes in everybody's folders for the finale event. Um, so those are in your folders tonight. The city has debuted its um, Centennial logo. So if you haven't had a chance to see that, we shared it on our social media. It's on their website. 
Um, so they're starting to roll out their centennial celebration. And then I wanted to mention that I had a chance last weekend when it actually wasn't raining um, to go visit our parks and um, went to the skate park down in uh, East Boca, which we've talked about um, if that moves and where that could go. So it was a, a good visit there and a, a fun uh, skate park, definitely outdated. Um, so it'll be nice if we do look at revamping a new skate park with a little bigger area. Um, after the skate park, it was getting dark. It was around 9 o'clock, and we decided to stop by Patrick Park to actually go on the playground, and I was surprised by the number of families out there at nighttime using the playground. A lot of our playgrounds are closed. Um, when we when we did the design for the future playground, we actually considered the fact that some kids are allergic to the sun, so we want to have accommodation for that, um, and we're replacing the lighting that's out there with LED lighting, so we'll still have that available once we build a new Patch Reef Park, but being there at night, um, it made me realize how important that playground is to the neighborhood and to the community, because it's not just during the daytime, it's also used at night a lot. So. Um, I'm excited about the changes over there and, and the people that will use it in the future. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just as Brian indicated, the agreement, the concession agreement with Boca Paddle, we anticipate having on your next agenda. Just for reference, when you see that agreement, you're going to see it accompanied by a resolution, which includes some very specific findings on behalf of the board, which will support the approval to the extent the district uh, moves in that direction. I know we've had individual briefings with the five of you, and Sam and I both wanted to thank you for your time, attention, and feedback on um, on that agreement. It's been a long haul, a long work in progress, both on behalf of our office and your executive director, and uh, we look forward to presenting it to you on the 15th. So thank you all for your time and attention. Thank you. Do you want to go first? Um, actually, something that uh, I thought about a long time ago uh, with regard to the uh, ball fields. Um, you might want to think doing something like selling sponsorships, you know, signs, for example, on the scoreboard. If Publix wants to take advantage of putting a sign there, maybe they'll pick up the cost of putting up a scoreboard or people, uh, other businesses uh, wanting to pitch in for batting cages or bullpens, things like that. Um, might be done uh, in cooperation or in collaboration with the city uh, and possibly with uh, Boca Chamber or, or uh, Rotary. But um, in addition to uh, fundraising by the, uh, the various Little League groups, uh, this might be another way to go and, uh, you know, get a little bit of community participation. Uh, other than that, I uh, wish everybody a great 4th of July, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I will. Um, on August 12th, I am making my return to the Boca Comedy Stage. Uh, I will be participating in Boca's Got Talent. So I, I don't know if the second part uh, uh, applies to me, but we'll find out. Mike. Um, thank you. I think everything tonight great for the budget. The one item I did forget that we should give consideration to is the rugby fields and um, where and when that could be, but it was kind of contingent on further discussion with the city. So I realize Greg has been out, but I think the, the budgetary capex type things also has some flexibility in it, depending on what the city can do, what they can go back and forth with. So something to consider. And um, I know the tower went up. Congratulations to our commissioners who were all there and saw it. That it was um, from a distance. It looked pretty good. It's still pretty impressive overall. Um, it's quite an accomplishment for, for Boca to have it done. Um, it's definitely something that will add a lot of value to Gumbo Limbo into the future. So, and I think there's some work around it. So that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I guess it was last um, Monday or Tuesday, we had a legislative uh, delegation that visited Gumbo Limbo. Uh, Susie, uh, Craig, and I were there. Uh, I, I was so impressed by uh, Leanne's presentation uh, at the very beginning uh, and talking about uh, how Gumbo Limbo started the history. Um, I, I, I never knew that uh, Turtle's gender was determined by 
heat or cold, that uh, the women are uh, the women are hot and the men are cool. Uh, and so there's very few uh, female turtles that are born. I learned that. And I, fortunately, I was only able to stay uh, a little bit longer in, in the sea lab that uh, the university has, which was also impressive. Uh, we're, we're just so fortunate to have the talent and the resources that we have that, uh, you know, sh show what we're doing to protect uh, our uh, uh, sea life and, um, and, and, the, the staff that we have there are, are just uh, outstanding. And I, I'm sure, I think the, the only one uh, legislator was there, uh, the rest of them were their aides, uh, but um, I've met some of those on some of my visits to Tallahassee and I uh, think uh, they can't help but have been impressed with it. I didn't get to see the tower this time because I ran out of time, uh, but the time that I spent there was uh, probably uh, you know, I, I learned a, a lot uh, about uh, the activities that go on over at Gumbo Limbo, and we're very fortunate to be able to uh, help fund uh, that uh, existence of that facility and uh, the number of people that come through there, just impressive. Uh, and the tower is just going to be uh, an incredible asset to us. Uh, it's something that was missing for a long time, and I'm glad that uh, we stuck it out and uh, kept, kept it going. Uh, uh, because it certainly will be, uh, it'll will be something that will endure forever. And I wish Gordon Gilbert had been present for that rather than just FaceTiming, you know, but um, it, it wasn't to be the case, but I'm sure he's uh, very proud of uh, the fact that Gumbo Limbo has, uh, he's left quite a legacy there and the, the completion of the tower and uh, of that facility. And the, the, uh, the facility looks a little uh, tired uh, in some places, so at some point uh, we're probably going to be looking at uh, doing something to upgrade that facility over there. But it's a wonderful asset to the community that uh, we uh, make available. That's it, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Susan? Well, I was lucky enough to go to the ribbon cutting as well with City Council, and that was a very um, good experience. Everybody was uh, thinking positively about our relationship with city council and the district. And I'm looking forward to the next year and working with them. Um, the uh, event at with the legislative delegation also was enlightening. All these young people wanting to go into uh, different aspects of our community and give back. Uh, it, it's it brings hope. So, and I wish everyone a wonderful 4th of July and a very safe one. Um, I have nothing except for a happy 4th of July and next meeting I will see you via Zoom. So we'll be away, but I will still be here. So, um, and the city's having their events, multiple events actually this year. They have a 5K, um, what's that? Pickleball and tennis tournament and Sugar Sand Park block party, and then the fabulous fourth finale. So lots of stuff going. You could be out all day if you wanted to. Um, maybe make it over to the beach at some point. Um, so that's about it. So Move to adjourn. Second. Okay. Commissioner Ernst? Yes. Commissioner Engel? Yes. Commissioner Rollins? Yes. Commissioner Vogel say? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Motion passes. We are adjourned. Good job. Safe travel.